Alright, welcome back to the all solar powered workstation and in this step we're going to remove the excess aluminum from the backing plate of our solar panel. I've cut a length of aluminum and I cut it a bit long uh, just to be sure that uh, it would be long enough to uh, accommodate these 40 solar cells. And then we're going to begin work on the junction box slash squeeze connector. Uh, that's where your power wires are going to come out of the solar panel. All right, let's get started. First off, you need to leave at least one inch at the end of the solar panel. This is a custom made solar panel and it's made for the contour of the gunnel for the rub rail on a boat. So one end's a bit longer. And at the junction box squeeze connector end, we're going to make sure that we have at least one inch beyond where the screws for the squeeze connector are drilled through the aluminum. All right, so I've kind of set this up. I think all we need to do is make a measurement down here and we can cut the aluminum. As you can see, I've got a couple of uh, screws just kind of sitting in place here, and they are one inch away from the very first solar cell. That's going to give us room to dress in the wiring that's going to be coming into the squeeze connector. Okay, and so I'm going to also have one inch beyond the holes that I'm drilling for the squeeze connector. So I'm going to mark that. So basically, you're going to have two inches total beyond your first solar cell to the end of your aluminum. We can remove our solar cells from our work area. I'm just going to set them off to the side. And remember, they're still very delicate. So I've marked it here. And I'm just going to make a straight line across. And we can go ahead and cut that up. Measure twice, cut once. Good rule of thumb. I'm using 10 snips to cut this aluminum. This aluminum, once again, is decimal 32, I'm sorry, decimal 032 gauge. And it's uh, pretty nice stuff. We're going to go ahead and round the corners of this aluminum. Just dress it up a little bit and also makes it so it's not quite so sharp. Okay, and once you have those corners cut off, I'm going to cut this one just a little bit more. It needs a little bit more roundness to it. As you recall, I have an additional two inches beyond the end of the solar cells. And I come in one inch. I'm going to mark that. That's where our holes are going to get drilled for the squeeze connector junction box. And I'm actually just going to make a line all the way across. One inch. And these are number six machine screws. So you want to have a drill bit that is uh, just a little bit larger in diameter than your machine screw. And that's what we're going to use to make these holes. You will also need a wood block, a sacrificial wood block. 
This will uh, make it to where you're not going to damage your workstation. Just put that underneath it here, and then we're going to make our holes. All right. Uh, solar cells are two inches in length. Well, I need to find. You want to find the center. This is happens to be three inches wide, so we're going to go inch and a half. That's the center, and I'm going to drill one half inch off of each side of the center. So I've marked that and I'm going to go ahead and, and make these holes using a portable drill that's been powered up right here at the all solar workstation. Just remember to take your time when you do this. Sometimes it's good to stand up. And you just want to go straight down over top of your mark. Take your time. And drill through it just enough to get through it. Stop. Well, you're not going to be going down through your sacrificial wood too far. And I think you've got a nice set of holes there. These machine screws will fit right through there. Perfect. Next thing we want to do is cut a tab to fit over top of the squeeze connector area. So I'm just going to use some of this excess aluminum that we have and we want that to be about one inch in width and I'm just going to measure that off make a line and cut the aluminum and it doesn't have to be you know perfect you can if you want to make an oval you want to make it hexagonal shape, make whatever shape you want to, as long as it's going to cover up and be extended beyond those holes, three eighths of an inch on each side. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and line these holes up and we're going to drill our tab piece for the squeeze connector. use a piece of tape to hold your tab for the squeeze connector in place so that you can make your marks. And line it up just to the middle. Another couple of marks there on the tab. So you can line it up to the middle. It's all centered. And just put a piece of tape down on it. So it won't move when you turn your solar panel backing over. And right there at those holes that you've drilled, just mark those with a pencil or use a magic marker. I like using a pencil. Flip it back over. You can take off your tab. It's ready to drill. It looks pretty good. It's not perfectly centered, but it looks pretty darn good. 
go we just set it down on our sacrificial wood and drill out the hole Take your time. And if you did it right, everything should line up perfectly. Sure enough. Then, one more thing we want to do here. And uh, we want to insulate both the bottom side of the squeeze connector junction box and the top side of the squeeze connector junction box. So we're going to cut a couple pieces of rubber. And uh, this is actually from roofing. It's the underlayment of the roofing before you put the shingles on. You can get this at any uh, hardware store or one of those larger places like well you can't mention their names but Home Depot and Lowe's. <laughs> and uh, but you want to have that fit so draw around your squeeze connector tab and draw twice, just make two of them. And then you want to cut those out. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. While you have that on there, go ahead and mark your holes. So you can just drill through those so everything will line up perfectly I use regular household scissors go ahead and cut these out you could drill them first I'm going to go ahead and cut them out Oh, it's so hard to stay within the lines. So exciting. Making your own solar panels. Custom ones at that. And semi-flexible. which is about the only thing you can put in a small boat. There's just no room. You have to go with the contours and lines of the boat. All boat builders understand that real well. All right, so we have two insulating pads made of rubber. And we're gonna go ahead and drill holes so that the machine screws can go through it. Take your time. If you do this with the drill, just make sure you've gone through it. You can also use, and I think I will on this, this is kind of thick rubber. You can also use an X-Acto knife and just go across it, make an X. And once you've done that, you might just check to make sure your machine screw is going to go through there alright. Because once you're ready to put these all together, it needs to go wham bam. Looks like it's fitting in there pretty good. Not really sticking out on any sides. I think that one looks good. And uh, we'll go ahead and get this one, make sure. Oh yeah, that one went right in there. Perfect. There's one. Looks 
X-Acto knife, just make crosshair. Crosshair is right across your hole. Go about three sixteenths of an inch beyond the hole that you drill. Check it. Make sure that your machine screw will go right through it without a problem. And you're ready to rock. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way. your workstation as clean as possible. All these little shavings of metal, you don't want them to get onto your solar cells. So I'm very careful about that kind of thing. We're almost ready for plastic gloves, rubber gloves, surgical gloves, because we're going to start doing lamination real soon. Junction box squeeze connector parts, screw, insulator. On top of the insulator is where you're going to have your wire. Another piece of insulation, rubber insulator. Over top of that, your squeeze connector tab. And your nut to go on top of that. And, well, we're going to have a washer, uh, a lock washer, and a nut. And we're going to tighten that all down. That way this cannot move. You cannot move the wire. And it will not delaminate from your board. You're not going to be able to pull it out. You don't have to worry about any connection problems. And it will be good to go. Alright, I think we're ready for the next step.